Oops. Okay, I need it again. to change the time because I said them all to 2.30. Alright, at least get 2.30. I don't feel like changing the clock. You're welcome. <laughs> they can move these? Yeah, they can move them. They just can't use the... Alright. So for the... Oh, I can't, dude. I'm all corded up. This may be saying this so much harder. Uh, it's not going to go over this. You don't think so? Go back up. Go back up. Not that much. Not all the way up. Oh, right. I took the weight off. As long as there's like a good amount of clearance, that's good. As long as there's clearance enough on the other side where they're not going to uh, accidentally bump into the light. Is there any way to make this white like, sh like the white strap shorter too? The white straps? Yeah, we pulled off. Uh, we don't have uh yeah, just go through this one place. Until we start. Uh, yeah. She's first, so she needs some warm up time. So I yeah, we're. So the first two obstacles are exactly the same, right? Okay. I 
They can dive through that like real quick. Yeah, with so little run up. I didn't know if I put a wing. Okay. So I recognize that's oh. Uh, I don't know. The stream was muted for the first little bit of that walk through there, so I'll just catch everybody up. The first couple obstacles are exactly the same as they have been for the entire weekend. Red squares are the only thing in play for obstacle one. Going to the blue, not a spillover, so they got to stick the landing, make that turn onto the quad steps, where the rock wall is then in play for the hands only on this right-hand side of the tape. Once they get past that tape line, only the brain and the rope are in play for the hands. And then from there, it is feet only on the rocks. Going from the rocks, we're going to the green again. Now, this is the first change for the teen in the elite course. You'll see that there are no hanging obstacles, and that is because they will be using the pole to go up. And the sticks are the start platform, or well, not the start platform, but the, uh, the grips that they're going to be using to get through this third obstacle here. So sticks, they get two of them that are allowed to move. And then they got to angle their swing to get a dismount right over here on the red pad. Now you'll notice that there's a cage around the first red balloon, or the only red balloon. That is so to prevent people from sliding the balloon out of place, moving it to a more advantageous position intentionally. So if they are engaged with the balloon while it is outside of the pink, that is considered a fault and will result in a uh, end of time for their run. So they have to go from the red balloon to the bar and then to the black box. And then from there, the hanging hold line is identical to that of the young adult and the adult males. Uh, so they just swing through there and dismount on the blue and green mat at the end. Continuing on around this way, again, they use the rope to swing through and make it to the ladder and climb up. Now the holds have been changed out for this age group or these two divisions such that they only have that narrow ledge at the start and then they have to use these smaller bogeys only on the cliff line here. So it is bogeys only going through this way. They get two on this side, two on the other side. T ledge is in play entirely, so that's the red hold hanging in the center there. And then they're going to go across to the cliffhanger on the opposite side. After they make it to that cliffhanger, all of the devil steps are in play. They can use as many or as few as they'd like. And then the dismount is that red pad right there on the floor there. From that point, it is going to be probably the most challenging obstacle of the entire weekend where you have to go, or well, you may go up to the pink bar or the silver bar here with the pink tape on it and then use that to engage with the bar that is not currently set up. But the bar is a free hanging bar now that will hang onto the cradles or the red drone cradles there. You must use the, that bar to make your way down the lane as far as you deem necessary to go all the way down. And then, as before, the UFO is the clear point for that obstacle. And then you must simply dismount from the UFO. Wall is allowed to be used to the red map over there, kitty corner around the pole. And then the last challenge is going under the wall after you lift it up. So, teams first. You just have to scroll down and do it. Just call them up. So once they get to the wall, they have to lift that up. The reason that white PVC pipe is there is to deter people from trying to dive through. Because they do get a little bit more space here at the start for a potential run up. But ideally that bar or the piping there will prevent them from trying to dive through that. And also the top part of the wall is out of play. So they must go down and lift it, go underneath the wall, and then climb over the red pads to make their way down and ring that bell at the end of the line. So that is it for the teen in the elite course today. I believe the time, in it, time limit for both or all four groups is going to be two and a half minutes. So they are going to have the least amount of time as well. Hopefully, we're going to see a lot of good runs. Lots of speed from every athlete is going to be required because, again, uh, earlier we had a lot of runs ending at around a minute, minute 40. So every extra swing counts. It's going to be real close. So not a lot of room for errors. You can see a lot of the athletes that are here today kind of mapping things out, talking to their coaches, talking to parents 
trying to figure out what the best way to go through each obstacle is going to be. And, you know, such has been the story for the entire week. And I think that that cliff line, that balance obstacle, and the bar at the top there are going to be our three points where a lot of athletes are going to have to really, as they say, lock in to get through. So again, the balance, bar hopper, and cliffs, I suppose we could call them bogeys. Now there aren't really any cliffhangers left. We got one on the last end, but everything else is a bogey. So everyone's starting to clear the course. It looks like we're going to be getting started here shortly. Everyone's going to have to come to terms with whatever plans they've made and then think about how their approaches from the sidelines. And then from there, it's just putting it all on the line at the start. Uh, yeah, if you guys can try and find your way up the course soon, we're going to get started. <laughs> on the course? No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick you up. I'll carry you out of here. Maybe. Hop on. Why do you guys have this bar here? Therese, can you put this in the warm up room, please? Thank you. So some final look at the obstacles here before we get going. Let me see if I can find out where these sticks are. So let's see that there's one sticking out there. And the second stick is there. So we're standing here. We're going to be hanging right about here. That's about how far that dismount's looking. So not too bad of a jump. All right, uh, Caitlin. All right, so it looks like we're starting out with the team wave. We're going to start off with Caitlin coming up here to the start platform. Easy clear on that first obstacle there. Just moving right along the rock wall. Good grab on the brain there. Clears on the green. All right, let's see how this angle looks on the stick holds here. Nice, excellent dismount. Looking strong so far. Off to a great start on these first three obstacles. Coming over to the balance. Oh, nice. Bends knees just enough to make sure we stay stable. And nice and controlled. Very calm up here on the grip line. Building up a lot of swing to try and bypass that first nunchuck. Does so. And sticks the landing for the clear on that obstacle. Nice huge jump out to that ladder. Now, for something I forgot to mention during my walkthrough is the ladder is no longer the touch point for this obstacle. It is now that first bogey there. Now that she's tapped that uh, bogey, she is now clear of the rope obstacle and engaged with the bogeys or the cliff line. So it looks like she's trying to really consider her approach, really evaluating where each of those holds are because you got to preemptively figure out where you want to be. Building up that swing, there's not a lot of room. Oh, but loses it on that second, that last bogey there, trying to make the transfer across. All right, now this is an official flying bar obstacle. I think the first time Grips has had one of these. Taking a second to get your composure together. Trying to go up to the bar. Starts to, starting to build that swing up. Now this is an aluminum bar. 
Not very light. Yeah. If you're not familiar with that kind of move, that can definitely be a little bit daunting. Manages to get that wall up nice and smoothly up here. Drops down to get underneath and is clear of the wall and clears for the course. An excellent run from Caitlin. Having a little <clears throat> bit of a hard time up there on the bogeys, but definitely doing a great job everywhere else. She got there nice and quick. Saved a lot of time for sure. No wasted movements from what I could tell. Right. Yeah, those bogeys, there's a lot of space in between each of them here. We got all that gap on this side, and all that gap over here. So you kind of are forced almost to go through this backwards and make huge moves. Got a lot of commitment. Really trusting your grip strength on this. So our next athlete is up, cruising through, opting to not use the roll on the rocks on the first half of the wall there. Saves a little bit of time for sure, a couple of seconds at the very least. Engages with the pole there to reach out and start using those sticks. Nice. So she's locked up on the sticks there. Building that swing up, looking good. Nice, and sticks the landing. So now we're on to our balance line. Twisting that little balloon there to try and get herself in position of what she wants to go. Oh, lands into a body prop. Manages to avoid landing on the carpet. Kept the feet up for sure. Now she's cruising right through this grip line here. Locking up strong on the nunchucks, matching up with two hands. A very good idea. Takes an extra swing and then goes for the dismount where she lands. Now she's up here on the rope. Best way to save time when you've got so little. 2.30 is all we got on the clock. So one swing is going to be have to be enough, which she manages to do with no issues. All right, so she clears the rope up with a Tarzan and is now engaged with the cliff line, reaching out very far. It's a good thing that those feet were up on that ladder. That would have been a very hard move otherwise. Nice. Oh, oh but she misses the grab on the opposite side of the bogeys here. Considering trying, decides that she does not want to try that flying bar. This is Bray. That's what her shirt says, anyway. So we're just gonna go with. It's gonna say just Bray. Very light work on the first obstacle there. Makes a good transition over to the brain. Huge jump out and clears onto the green, making our way over to the sticks. Ops not to move the sticks whatsoever. These do spin a little bit if you don't get two hands on those nice and quick. Strong dismount as the body oriented to jump. Oh, and just not enough power in that leap. Came up a little bit short. Now she's making her way onto the grip line here. Skips that second cannonball. Gets a strong hold on that nunchuck. Two excellent pullbacks and then dismounts. Nice, huge toss. Almost misses the ladder. Makes that first contact. She decides to go for a forward approach, which could prove advantageous. That's the start, but now we're up here, and oh, too much momentum throws her off. What? She said, no flying bar for me, thanks. She said, no door for me either. I've had enough. <laughs> I don't know. 
Teens seem to be intimidated by our flying bar ops going. Could be a strategy though. It could be just them saying, "Hey, I want to save my energy for later," because it's it is already a fairly taxing course in terms of your grip, and the challenge course is pretty similar. It's going to be daunting and tax the grip strength quite a bit if you guys have been following that one at all. So Aiden is up, gets a good amount of swing here, matches up on that first half of the stick, lines his swing up beautifully. He's just got to stick the dismount here. Oh, stumbles a little bit, but manages to redeem itself. Hops across. Oh! Wobbles a little bit on the balance, but secures himself. He goes for the next obstacle. Looking very strong up here. Nice. Good and controlled. His swing is straight. Reaching a little bit high on that first nunchuck, but, or that second nunchuck, and adjusts accordingly. So to avoid getting called out. A little bit, a little bit shy of that ladder. But he comes back to correct himself, comes back with more fire, gets his feet up, and he's going up. So again, he has to engage with that first cliff ledge there in order to get the clear. There we go, good. Now he's clear of the ladder, and he's making his way up onto the bogeys. This is going to be a really tough reach. He's got a lot of swing going into this. Hopefully it's not too much. Oh, misses the grab, but from there it just tosses him off. He's thinking about giving the flying bar a shot. So it's going to be our second look at the flying bar today. Let's see how it looks. He's got the switch grip locked in. Very good idea on a free bar like this that has potential to rotate on you. He's eyeing that right side wants to make sure it comes out and does what he needs it to do. He's got a decent amount of swing. I don't think you need too much for this first transfer. Oh, and he bails, deciding that he doesn't want to go for it but decides that the wall is where he's going to show off his stuff. Getting down low, engaging a lot. He wedges his knee underneath. He's... Come on, Aiden. Both feet, both feet. There we go, nice, there's the power. We just need a little adjustment in the technique there. There we go. Nice. Small adjustment in technique made all the difference on that last obstacle there. All right. So we're resetting here. Cruising through this first set of runners today just about through all with our teens i think i'm not sure what the setup is actually i should retract that statement so we're looking for lucas We got Lucas up over there trying to get beats on the, the next course, but he's got to lock in for the one that stands before him right now. So hopefully that uh, that little detour doesn't throw him off his game. We're going to find out here shortly. There he goes. Light steps all the way through. Looking strong, his slips, foot is sliding a little bit on the first quad step. Quickly recovers, jumps out to the green, and sticks the landing. Goes left into the first stick. Hanging on strong, makes a huge reach there. And then jumps out. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if that heel touched the ground on that one. It's going to be a close call. If anything, we'll go under video review for that. Makes a good transition from the balance onto that box there. No hands required. <laughs> Huge swing. Oh, that slip check was a little too, too in the face there, and he decides that it's got to be used. Oh, and again, another very close call on that dismount there. Thank you. 
Nice. Reaches up all the way to the top of the ladder. He's got a lot of weight going backwards. Makes that nice reach around to get to the cliff. And clears the le the uh, rope obstacle there by engaging with the bogey. Oh, but not enough grip to continue down the bogey line. Now let's see how he feels about this flying bar. Not sure if he's done this before, but we're going to certainly see how it works out today. Now he's engaged with the flying bar, going for the switch grip. Ooh, get out, get out, get out. A little slow in the clear, but fortunately manages to get out of the way. Gets the wall up without any problem. And then clears. An unfortunate close call, but manages to avoid danger nonetheless. And then we're going to move on to our next athlete here shortly. Briefly delayed here while we wait to figure out if this, uh, this athlete's coach is going to be able to make it over in time for his run. Uh, he's not stepping to the start platform until his coach arrives, it seems. So we're going to leave it up to the official Ryan here to decide if we're going to wait for the coach or uh, it looks like that is the call that we're going to be making. All right. Hartley had an opportunity to catch his breath after just running the court challenge course over on the other side. But Scott is here. You can see he's a little winded.
Nice. A little far on the side of that landing, man. I think we got a small rip here on the sticks. But he's got a... All right, we are going to be delayed a little bit further on our runs here as the athlete has ripped his hands and we have to ask that we delay his run. James, they just wrapped it. We just need to clean the stick.
All right. I think we got Emmett up on the start block as we resume our competition today. And it goes up and across, sliding down a little bit on those quad steps, making a recovery. All right, locking up onto the sticks. I'm not sure what else you would call them here. Building up that swing for the dismount. And he nails the landing. Very slow and focused here on the balance. Very nice jump. And we're going down to the grip strength line. Interesting grab up there on the cannonballs. That manages to keep a lot of power, holding up nice and high, locking up. Nice, and he sticks the landing over there. He's got to go for this jump here to get to that rope. Decides to go back for a reset. Again, we only have two minute, two and a half minutes here on the clock, so there's not a lot of time for second guessing or retries. But hopefully that doesn't serve too much of an issue as we continue going down here as we get to one of the first crux, or the second crux point, I think, on our entire course here today is the bogey line. So he's got his hands locked in on the first two bogeys, it looks like. He's got a big reach to get, oh, right on the edge of that second, or the third one. He's trying to figure out where that fourth one's at. It's, a, again, another huge reach that he's gonna have to engage the hips, keep his weight up a little bit. Oh, just misses that grab pinches the wall and just doesn't make it onto the cliff. Now we're moving on over to the flying bar here. Going for that switch grip, an excellent decision. Facing backwards. Maybe to get that first move done a little bit more easily. Nice, and he gets that first move done. So now comes the challenge of getting it out of the cradle, or out of the drones and into the next set of cradles here. If he can do that, oh. Oh, fortunately, he manages to keep a good grip on there to not slip off. Gets low. Heels aren't staying on the ground, and that's going to be a huge issue if we're trying to lift things up because that's where all that power comes from is having the heels planted. Oh, he's engaged in the back. Gets it up just a couple inches. Nice. He's slowly getting it up there. Nice. It's high enough, it looks like. Looks like it's staying in place. Sneaks his way under, going up and over the wall, or on the box. Drops down and clears with that ring on the bell. Strong performance from Emmett. Again, just another unfortunate victim of the bogeys. That line is not to be underestimated by any means. And I don't think that's the issue. I don't think anyone is thinking, oh yeah, I got this. I can do this in my sleep. When they approach that obstacle, I think, I think it's just inherently difficult, you know? No, they aren't short reaches. They're not easy grabs. It's just difficult all in all. So we've got one of the Yees up. I, which we don't, I think his name is Dylan. We've got Dylan Yee up on the start platform. Having a great time out here focusing. You can see that his eyes are locked into every move that he makes. Trying to spot the placement before he commits to it. Conserving as much energy as possible. Kicks are a little bit off, but he corrects it at the last second for a strong dismount. Now again, we got somebody that's got to orient themselves. Oh, with the dismount onto the balance is just not it. He fumbles a little bit and goes splat fully sprawled out and crashes into the box. What makes after immediately afterward makes the grip line look like nothing. Oh, now he's having a good time. He's got that smile on his face. Figures, he runs basically over. Might as well enjoy it while I'm here. All right, the challenge of the bogeys presents itself. He's got one hand on either side, going for a big pull. Box in on that first, third one. Trying to spot where that fourth one might be, and it's a little bit further behind where he can see. Oh, but the strength in that left hand there is what it takes to get over. 
Nice, another strong grip, makes it over to the cliff. Onto the devil steps, and a last little bit there for the clear. So that would be a clear on the bogey line there. And we're up here on the flying bar now. Nice. That's it, following in Emmett's footsteps here, hopping over while facing one way and then adjusting to face the other way to try and try and get that next move completed. But I think the timing on... Oh, and again, just like Emmett, too. He gets the bar out of the cradles, but unfortunately does not make it into the next transfer. Gets that wall up nice and high. Still got to go a little bit high. He wants to go up a little bit more. Decides he doesn't have to and just drops down low and climbs up and over the box. Stumbling just a little bit, but he's got enough to clear, and that's the end of it. Excellent run from Dylan. Strong performance, especially over there on that cliff line. I'm wondering, you know, because after you fall on something, it affects your mental for the rest of your run, whether it be a full course or a full course. And I'm wondering if, if had he not fallen on the balance, if he would have been able to fully clear that course. Because, you know, he he got past one, two, one of the biggest cruxes on the entire thing being that line of bogeys there and from there i think i think he would have had a good chance of getting in first place with that kind of run strong performance from dylan all right we got our next runner up didn't catch his name but he's cruising right along clinging to that wall and making nice strong movements all the way through to the green box now we gotta watch the feet here. The, bot, the platform is a much lower mat, so you don't have to worry about foot tapping as much, but the grips might be a little bit harder, and you don't get as many. Stumbles a little bit on the balance or on the platform for the finish of that obstacle, but he secures himself. Makes a big reach across, and nice. Makes a split decision or a snap decision to go for that box at the last second to avoid falling on the balance rails. And again, like most of our athletes today, just Flying through this whole cliff line here. Nice. Reaching out for a strong grab on the ladder. I believe I'm hearing his name is Aiden. So good work to Aiden thus far. We got that point on the bogey. Reaching out. Got two. He's got another bogey. And then the challenge about going forward is while you can still see where the next bogey is, the, the transition from the bogey over to the tee ledge is much harder. As you can hey, see, the way the, the shoulder is right? oriented, yes, good. It, it doesn't want to go that way. So now Aiden's going to try out the flying bar here. Again, copying Emmett and Dylan with the face one way to make that first cradle hop. Turning around to make it out of the next set. Oh, watching that right side quite a bit there. Gonna need a lot of power. Oh. And he's got one on each side there, if you can see it. Gets low. Struggles a little bit to get that wall up, but he gets it much higher than necessary and crawls underneath, easily clearing and finishing up strong on that course run. Let's see, I'm going to take a peek at who we got up next. Looks like Thomas is up next. And I believe that's who we have up here on the starting block. So we got Thomas up. And he's going off, enjoying it, having a little fun there on the red squares. And sixth landing there on the green box. Nice, solid reaches here. Starts to build up that swing, already going in the right direction. He's just got to pull through and stick the landing, which he does. And again, this is a big jump for a lot of competitors. You got to trust that momentum. Oh, nice, just clearing that floor there. Close call when he lands on the side, but he manages to pull himself up. And then get those flowy, looking like it's effortless pulls here 
on the grip line does have to lock off a bit for the nunchucks and then goes for that dismount where it's nice and solid. Chalking up a little bit in preparation for the bogey line, I'm sure. Hopefully the rope doesn't finesse enough too much of that chalk. First jump out is not going to cut it. Nice. Second time through does, does the trick. He does have to get to that second, that little bogey there, that first bogey. Yep, that's the point there. So that is the, that's important for the timing on these obstacles if it comes down to it. Because again, a lot of people are falling here. Huge reach, huge reach. Oh, but he can't quite find it while he's in the middle of their reach. It's a little bit lost. Oh. He did try to do the forward technique facing away from the back cradle to try and make that transfer over. Fortunately, it does not work for him. Once he makes his way down to that wall, though, it's nothing. Clears it like it's lightweights. Brings the bell for the finish. Strong run from Thomas. Xavier is up next. Yep. So we got Xavier up. Almost done resetting the course. Going off, can't quite see where the footing is, but I'm sure he did a fine job getting across the red squares there. And then same, keeping his body facing the wall as you should. If you've ever gone right climbing, that is the best way to get across those small holes. Oh, moving a little too quickly here. He misses the foot footing on the wall, can't quite get all the way to the green like he wants. And then a quick turnaround midair secures it. I know we can't quite see where those sticks are here. I'm going to try and go up some. There we are. Nice. Excellent job. Again, walking those hips up nice and high. Plenty of swing. Just got to get the precision for that big dismount. Oh, nice. Saves it by pulling down on the other side. Excellent call there at the last second. Clutching up. All right. Angles that Bosu and his foot. Not Bosu, balloon. In the direction he wants to go, double foots it. Oh, but not enough power in that jump to get across. He comes up a little bit short, walking himself backwards. Lots of control up here on the grip line. Good pulls, one hand on each nunchuck. He does not choose to lock off. Doesn't have to. All right, and he's going for that rope. Swings out. Mm, I don't know if that's going to be enough swing to get to where he needs to be. Decides that he needs to go back to the start platform and reset. Great decision. He's going for another way around. Oh, comes up a little bit short on the reach. All right, and then he steps down. Not quite getting there. Sorry, went a little too excited on the trigger to get that camera up. All right, one hand is up on the first bogey there. He's reaching out, grips up on that second one. He's got a big bump with that right hand there to get over to that third. Oh, but not enough. All right, we're going to see what we got. Oh, we're here on the flying bar. Very tough move so far today. I don't think we've had anyone have any success thus far. Could Xavier be our first athlete? Oh, no. Slips off. 
Drop that booty. Drop it like it's hot. Come on. Come on. Get that booty out. Oh, it's moving up slowly but surely. Uh, but there's not enough in the tank. Exhaustion of all that upper body obstacles kicks in and catches up to him and unfortunately just doesn't have it to get that wall up. All right. So we got Taven coming up from earlier who had an unfortunate rip on the wooden pegs. on our last and once Taven finishes his run we will be all set with our team competitors for this uh, flow course and then after Taven finishes his run we will switch over to the elites I believe we've got four or five elite males and three elite females competing today So it looks like Taven is extra taped up, ready to rumble. All right, and Ryan seems satisfied. All right, and he's off once again. He's got a little bit more fire in him this time after seeing some of these other competitors go. Potential benefit from, oh. All right, looks like he was allowed to use the wall there a little bit. Nice, good reaches. Hopefully we don't get another rip. There's a phone left there on the obstacle. <laughs> nice, huge toss there. Oh, but does not clear the balance this time around. An unfortunate, unfortunate occurrence that you hate to see. That ring is going kind of wild. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite him. Fortunately, it gets caught up in the other ring and does not lead to any injuries. Locking out on those nunchucks here. So got plenty of swings. And boom, that's it. I mean... All right, getting a little caught up on the ladder with their shaking all over the place. It does make that touch. Same charger. No. Sure. I need to get a new iPad. Okay. Just I get, have two iPads in the same account. Here, just yeah, just take the battery and grab yourself a charger. Looking good up here on the bogeys. Oh, but does not manage to make the match. So. All right, following the advisor and uh, recommendations of his coach, he's going for the reverse tech. So he's facing one way, hopping the bar across, and then switches to the other side. Oh, hops again just to the other side of the cradles. Oh, manages to maintain that grip to so avoid that bar coming down and chomping out. Gets low, nice. Lots of power to get that wall up. No issues. Almost curled that wall, if I'm not mistaken. Climbs up and over the box and walks his way down to finish and hit the bell. So with that being the conclusion of our teen athletes here today, we're going to shift right over onto the elite course, which looks like we're going to be starting off with one of our elite females. 
of Savannah. Now, it appears that Savannah, from the moment that she came in today, was very focused and had a very stoic energy about her that told me, at least, that she's not here to play around. She's here to complete this course, conquer the day, and walk home on that first place podium with that first place necklace, medallion, whatever you want to call it. Nice. Cruises right through the first obstacle. Well, a little bit of a slip up. May just quickly save herself when going on to the next set of obstacles here. Excellent poise here up on the sticks. Adjust that swing accordingly to get just enough of a pull and goes for that excellent landing. One leg karate kid technique. Manages to make that jump. Oh, but the foot drags on the floor a bit. I don't think that is going to be a clear, unfortunately. We're going to see how the rest of the course looks for her. Oh, huge pull through to that second nunchuck. Easily makes that landing. Offered some chalk by her coach, but decides that she is not in need of it. Says, I got this. I'm just going to make my way over to this ladder. And then maybe then I'll chalk up. Because he's still standing nearby. Nope, she decides, I'm going to just go for it. That's what I like to see. Personally, not a huge fan of chalk myself. Oh, grips onto the bottom board, pulling through with ease on those bogeys. Nice. Oh, but slips off of the T-ledge at the last second there. And decides that she might as well just finish the obstacle, pulling through and dismounting on the red. Now we're going to try out the flying bar, hopping up pretty quickly here. Boxing with that switch grip. That seems to be the beta that our athletes are going for today. Maintaining that swing while turning around, demonstrating lots of uh, bodily control. Oh, and we get a click on that first cradle, making that the closest anyone has come thus far to completing that obstacle here today. All right, Savannah goes, I didn't realize she got the wall up by the time she was underneath it, so must have been lightweight for her. Cleared it. Looking strong. All right, next up we have Joy. There goes Joy. Make a strong, strong start, just cruising right along through these first set of obstacles. Probably got through that first set of three, or first, yeah, first set of two, excuse me, in about under 30 seconds, probably. Under 15. We get this dismount here. Lots of swing looking good. Nice and secure, nice and steady on that landing, too. Taking a deep breath, a moment to pause and correct her positioning before we commit to that balance leap. Nice. Uses her height to get a little bit more extension out of it and manages to make it all the way to that next rail. Nice. Strong pulls here on the nunchucks. Looking excellent. Nice. Ooh. Coming a little bit close there. Again, using her height to... Not have to commit to a jump. Oh, but doesn't make it on that first swing through. Hooks her foot in. Oh, and again, it's just not enough. That platform, as you can see, is sliding a little bit. It's not stuck in place. So the more you kick into it, the harder it is going to be to get to that ladder. She takes a second to collect her composure. There we go. Looking much stronger in the third attempt. Nice. Manages to smack that cliffhanger here. And then we're moving on to the bogey line. Shakes out a little bit, because yeah, she's got one minute left on the clock, and she's got about three obstacles left to get through. She's got the bogeys, the bar, the UFO dismount, and the wall, so we're talking four obstacles at the end of the day. 
holding on nice and strong, looking excellent. Nice. Oh, but slips down on that fourth bogey. Crashes down into the net. Makes our way makes her way over here to the flying bar. Oh, just just misses the jump, unfortunately, and slips right off. It's okay though. We're gonna finish up with a nice strong wall lift. Engaging that back. Nice and lifts it up with no problem whatsoever. She's demonstrating how much power she's got. Climbs up and over that box, and you can just faintly hear that bell as she makes her way out of there and finishes the course strong. Showing off, showing a little few signs of fatigue here. She comes out the other end of that tunnel. And last but not least, we've got Sydney for our elite females. So Sydney and Dylan are brothers, obvious or brother and sister, excuse me. So we can see that she's being followed by him on the course here today as he followed her. Gotta love a good sibling rivalry, especially when it's in the same sport. So she's looking good up here on the sticks, not having much of an issue. Building that swing up marvelously and a strong dismount there. Very convincing as she lands. And this is the way that we've learned to do this obstacle is to just adjust that first balloon. Nice, and then one leap of faith as it were to keep going now if sydney can keep this same composure that she's shown thus far once she gets to these bogeys as long as she can get through the line of bogeys i believe that'll land her in first place we're almost at that point in the course she can't quite reach the rope unfortunately so she's gonna have to commit to that leap she does so taking a second to return back to that start platform Realign the swing and reaches out, snags that second from the top rung and immediately starts going up. Hits that point on the bogey there. And like I said, if she doesn't want it to be a matter of a few seconds. She's going to have to get through all four of these bogeys and then still have something left to make the transfer. Oh, but there's nothing left. And she slips off going down on that third, second bogey. With her run being at an end, unfortunately, she's still going to try out the obstacles that we've got left on the course here today, starting with our flying bar maneuver. She gets that swing going nice and steady, looking strong, makes that first transition without much issue. Immediately turns around to look at that next set of cradles. That's where we got to make it. So she's starting to build that swing up, generating it. Nice and strong. Oh, and again, we got one clip on one side. Clips the left side of that cradle, but unfortunately does not secure the right. And once we get that wall up, she's looking strong. Gets about waist high. Manages to get under the wall, and that is the end of Sydney's run. Again, another solid performance from our athletes here today. Moving on to our first of the elite lineup. First of the elite males lineup. I believe it is Joshua up here on the starting block. His name really is written on the back of his shirt. All right, Josh is off. There we are. Smooth work up here on the rock wall. Nice big pullback here onto the green. Clears it with no problems. Now he's locked up on the, well, not locked up, but locked in on the sticks. Nice deep squat. Oh, he's going, he's considering just completely skipping the balance. Decides that it might not be the best way to go about this. And instead goes for it. Oh, nice. That dive for the finish. And dive for the clear, I should say. Excellent pulls here. And sticks the landing over there on that step, or on that platform. Chalks up a little bit before engaging with our rope obstacle. Jumps out, excellent catch. Slides his foot into the bottom rung. He's going up. First contact on that next obstacle there has been made. Now he's just gotta make himself 
uh, adjust themselves so they can begin working on the line of bogeys. Nice, an excellent high reach up. Another good strong reach. Could this be the second time? Oh no, but the finger just snaps off of that tee ledge at the top there. In any case, might as well give this Unfortunately, I believe that was the bar that clipped on the side rail there. Making his way down over to the wall lift, pushes his chest forward into it, lifts it like it's nothing. Crawl, done, barely has to duck down to get under and clear that wall there. Next up for the elite males is Jesse, I think. Yes, it is Jesse that is up. And then strides right through the blue. Continuing a strong performance so far. Grabbing onto that rope. And then smoothly makes his way around the corner onto the next set of obstacles. Strong lock-offs here as he aims for that dismount on the red. Nice, excellent landing. Nice deep squat to maintain his balance. Oh, manages to make it to the box, but unfortunately is a little too much to the right side there to stick to the top of it. Besides that, he's still got the motivation to keep working his way through the course, taking a breath between each swing here. So keeping that blood flow. You don't want to get too pumped up here, especially when it comes to these bogeys. Nice huge pullback. Goes oh, lots of power to get to that ladder there. Begins making his way up. And leans himself back to start engaging with the bogeys. Looking a little spider-like up here. As he reaches back for that second one. To the third, reaching back for that number four, and then he's got a lock off going. Nice, makes a solid transition from one to the other, and again, keeping those lock offs strong as he finishes up with that dismount onto the red platform. Now, we're going to be checking out the last little bit after a brief moment of lag there, it looks like, to shake out, size up the obstacle before we start moving our way up. Nice, and he is fully engaged now. So it looks like he's, oh, went for the hop, but unfortunately did not get that other side locked in. So he rushes over, lifts the wall like it's nothing, quickly dives under, which is what you'd expect from an athlete with that kind of build, and clears at the bell. Strong display from Jesse. So an unfortunate mishap there on the, the balance line there. All right, up now is Jack Howe. An on and off regular at Grips Gym, being followed by Coach James. He's apparently been dismissed. So he's being followed by Coach James, who has apparently been dismissed into the back half of the course for uh, chalk holding duty. So Jack's already got a little bit of chalk up on his hands there, it looks like. So he doesn't need coaching at the start here. And then once he's finished asking his questions, we'll get going with his run. All right, looks like he's focused in. Lots of speed there. Quickly has to slow down in accord to, uh, to not overshoot that blue box. Nice, looking very strong here so far up on each of these sticks. Quickly builds a swing up and one good pull. Nice, solid dismount here. 
angles himself in the right direction, rocking the Coca-Cola socks. Nice, huge dive for that dismount there. Nice, huge pulls on each of these swings. Looking for that dismount. Makes the dismount on the nunchucks. Not wasting any time or energy. Flying through this course here today. Nice. And gets a good touch on that first bogey for the clear on the previous obstacle before he commits to actually moving along it. He's got one hand on either side of this wall here. So now let's see what he's got as we start to move down this way. Yes. Gets one on each side here. Now he's got to make that move over to the T-ledge. It's going to be a hard rotation, given the orientation of the shoulders. Oh, and he goes for a jump, trying to bypass the T-ledge, it looks like. And unfortunately, it's not enough power, given the positioning of his hands, to make that, that clear. So now we're up here on the flying bar, trying it out just for fun. Sizing it up a little bit, it looks like. Nice, easy transfer from one side to the next. As he again turns around to readjust his grip, sizing up those cradles, aim, looking to aim. Oh! Unfortunately, he gets out of there just. You reset it for us. Nice. A little distracted now, that knowing that his run is over, but manages to get that wall up. Nice, high lift, continues through and finishes up. All right, we got Andrew up on the starting block. Nice. And again, going through pretty quickly. After watching Jack's run, he realizes that he's got to go pretty fast through these obstacles here if he wants to have a spot on that podium. Nice. Solid dismount there. Again, angling himself perfectly. Nice. Smoothly, immediately going into that next obstacle, not wasting a second. Oh, oh, oh no! And you hate to see something like that happen. Goes for a huge dismount and just lands a little too close to the one side, causing it to tip over and dump him back in the no-no zone. He quickly makes that mental recovery to continue on to show us what he's got for the rest of this course here today. Nice, strong grips. Nice, making these bogeys look like he, they were made for him. Solid lock-off with the hand behind the head. And then crushing the bogey line there, which I think is going unfortunately largely unacknowledged by the crowd here. That is no small feat to fly through that the way he did. Oh, goes for that big hop, but unfortunately just launches the crate bar right into the opposite set of cradles. And again, he's going backwards onto the reverse set. Oh, managed to get the bar out that time, but does not have the momentum to carry him to the next set. Nice, uses a little bit of knee to get that wall up to where he wants it, and then clears. He finishes. And he is understandably frustrated by the way he went out on that platform. Other than the small slip up at the, at the end of that grip line, that was an excellent performance from Andrew. Should definitely be proud of his run there. Yeah, I'm gonna go make sure that that platform is repositioned to where it's gotta be. All right, we're looking good. Nice, excellent start here. And then reaches out smoothly. Very focused as he continues through here. Taking a big breath. Oh, 
squeezing the heck out of that. Swing facing the wrong direction, but manages to correct it just in the nick of time to spot his landing and secure it. So now we're at the ninja. The, the, the upsetter, I would call it. Over there on the, the balance line there. Huge pulls on the grip line here. Skipping, I think, half of the holds that are hanging up there today. For a nice, stable dismount. Nice, huge swing out to the ladder. Nice, gets the clear on the ladder, or on the rope obstacle ladder. And he's beginning to reorient himself so he can begin moving across the bogeys. Ops for the forward tech, which again, while making it a little bit nicer. Oh, oh no! He loses his grip and just slips off of that last bogey while reaching for the T-ledge here. Over here on the flying bar, the last obstacle for the second, third to last obstacle. Let's see how he approaches this one today. Nice, hops it to the forward side, which I don't know if he intended to do. Ooh, hops, tries to hop it to the back and unfortunately does not have enough power to get it all the way in. It goes crashing down. Gets nice and low very quickly on the wall. Drops to lift it. It's up there in no time. Slips under and clears for the finish. And now with that run, I believe that is the conclusion of uh, the elite athletes. Um, we'll do a quick check for video reviews, I believe, shortly, and then give the athletes a little bit of redemption time. But I think that's all of our runners for our flow course today. If you enjoyed the performances, uh, you can catch all of, I believe, all of the same athletes over on our challenge course here. That will get going in about 40, 45 minutes or so. Because as before, we got to do redemption over here on this side, and then we'll be switching up to the awards, and then they'll be allowed to go and try out the challenge course. So with that being said, I'm going to sign off for now, but I'll leave the stream going on mute so you can watch a little bit of the redemption.
All right, we're heading. It's about time to get started with the awards. We're going to start with uh, teens, and then we'll move up to the elites for the award ceremony here. So. Where's Ethan? Have him help you. Well, he can hold the medals or something. Ethan! Third, third, third. Oh, Ethan. <laughs> yes, correct. Excellent runs. Watch out. Excellent work. And we're going to. Good job, Emmett. Good job, you guys. Nice job, you guys are good. Everybody, you guys are all set. Nice. How is this an upcoming event? Is it muted or unmuted? I think this is unmuted. Okay. All right. I'll have to ask Artie for that. All right, where do I want to stand for this? Oh, please turn. So up, the right is left. Cool. Up here. Down. Wow, this thing is fast. Hard to keep up with. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out the controls. This is my first time on a new gimbal. Just about to get started. I think they're just making sure everything in the course is good. Let's 
So if I turn the gimbal, it doesn't turn unless I move it. Gotcha. I'll do my best to keep stuff in shot. I am live, I hope. Does it say go live? It's a stop. Oh, okay. Well, before we were streaming off the computer, now we're streaming off the phone. It's really weird because the last gimbal, if I turn sideways, would move with the gimbal. This one stays straight and I have to move it separately. Oh, that's cool. I don't like it because now I have to... It's backwards. I have to the other one didn't it. work at all. The other one's completely broken now, but it worked at one point. Obviously. Gotta move so fast. Yeah, I'm gonna slide the camera over so it's more evenly balanced too. There you go. Challenge course before. All right, a little bit different than the one up front. Here you get to retry stuff. Yeah. All right, so you get one retry per obstacle. So if you're on a trapeze, you slip off. I'll tell you to reset. Go back to the start platform. You'll get another countdown. Don't go until you hear three, two, one, go. Your time will be stopped while we reset. All right, if you go through and get it the second time, you're still good. Three tries don't count against your score. If you come to the alien now, you swing, miss the dismount, I'll have you reset. You go to the start platform, three, two, one, go. If you get it the second time, still good. Now you're under the boards, you miss it, you're done. All right, so one reset per obstacle, two resets total for the course. It would be incorrect. Yeah. Two for the goal. All right, so if you fail the same obstacle twice in a row, keep going until your time runs out. Any questions about challenge course? All right, awesome. Don't touch anything. Come on in. So we have almost the exact same course for everybody here. We'll have a different time limit. Uh, team female, elite female, we do have one small change once we get to this rope obstacle. Everything else is going to be the same for everybody. Sweet. All right, over here. Start of the course is on this weight electrical. I'll say three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Any part of the cargo net, hands or feet are good. Hands or feet on this part of the bench. Everybody say it's blue tape. Hands and feet past it. No good. Get it. It is saggy in the middle. So if your foot touches the ground like that, I'm going to give you a little warning because it's the first obstacle. Go back. Get your foot up. Your finished platform is this plate over here. Your invisible wall is right here. Don't step back. You can step to the side. You can step forward. Make sure you step on it, though. Any question on the first step? Carbon it. All right, your next start platform. So you get the red platform, you start, you get the front of this, not the top, just the front, and only the white part of the trapeze, <coughs> the just the skinny part right here, and not over here, just the skinny part. Your finished platform is the blue and green, so you have front face, what? white part, any part of this trapeze, this back part, 
can change it later. Talking about that purple map there. Incidental on this pipe is okay. This one. So that's okay. All right, don't grab on this to save you. So we can fall forward first. Yep, you can fall forward right into this. Just don't fall that way. Good. Any questions about this one? Right here. I know. 
Any questions on this one? Yeah, the box is just that everybody works on their logo.
for a little bit of a closer look at what they were saying over here. I know there's a lot of people in the way. They were saying that once they kick this through, if it gets stuck on the other side of the pipe, you can put your foot over to get it. Ooh, it's not illegal to uh, reach over. Okay, so elite male. Alrighty, what do you think about this course? What? what do you think about this course? is less technical, has more dynamic movements, which everybody loves. I think people might get a little hung up on certain places, like the, the little boxy thing over there. And uh, overall, I don't think there's anything that's like, oh, I can't do it. But it's definitely not going to be like, how fast can I do it? Because there is a short amount of time, a lot of obstacles. For the most part, they're kind of kind of mucky, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Mucky obstacles like the carbon net. What kind of a little mucky? You can't go fast on those. What are you going to do? Same with the spiral. <laughs> Gotta be smoothing. <laughs> Good insight from Coach Artie over here. What's up? There are a lot of slow obstacles. People think obstacles that people normally think of as slow, like that cargo net. We're gonna see who can get through this the fastest. And the last age group, this was a, oops, sorry. In the last age group, this was a race of time almost with people clocking out. What's up? He did. I, I figured it's James. A lot of people timed out instead of finishing the course, coming down to the last couple obstacles, like that roller at the very end. But we will see what happens today. This is an older age group with some minor course changes. I'm sorry, uh, older. I, I don't know. I don't want to say more skillful necessarily, but it is elite and teen, so there are a little bit harder courses, but generally higher skill. A lot of strategy getting developed by all the teams out here. This thing does not turn, it turns fast, but I don't want it to. So the thing about these mag, uh, these weights over here is they can use the red roller tube on top of them and stuff, but they can't step on them or anything. So they're just little obstacles that might be a little hard to get over. That's the red mat that they have to stick onto, and then they get that rope climb there all the way up to the bell. The rope will go down on the zip line. It gets really, really low near the end if you don't jump super high. So we'll have to see who's got hops and who can climb real fast today. Backwards. Jeez, up and down is fast. Left to right, I can't control. I need to figure out where I'm going to be standing. I think to start, I can probably stand pretty close to the middle over this way where I was before. And then as they make their way around, I'll have to kind of turn it over towards the second obstacle. And eventually I'll wind up behind them as they find their way over to the uh, balance obstacle and the uh, spiral obstacle. Everybody's still seeing how they can do this one here. Probably one of the, um, could be either one of the easiest or hardest obstacles, depending on how aware of your body you are. I've had people, I've seen, I haven't had people, I've seen people just barely scrape their backs up against that rope 
and because it's absolutely no contact, they just get called out for it. Luckily, they do get the resets challenge course reminder. They get one reset per obstacle, two resets throughout the entire course. So if they want to go for something risky, they have that chance, but it'll all come down to time. It's going to waste a little bit of time. And that time could be the difference. It could be very competitive with the number of people competing today and how short this course is. Could really come down to the wire. People starting to make their way to the back now. You're good. I know it was a little hard to see these obstacles too. They have that ring slider there, or the ring pop slider there, the red and gray. They slide it down from after they jump off the warp wall, and then they get the uh, space invaders to go down through the rings. I don't know how you commentate. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what to talk about. Pardon me? I don't know what that means. What? You could harass the athletes if people look like they're done walking through. Just ask them questions about sports. Fifteen seconds added to all time limits. Whatever your time was before, fifteen seconds on top of that now. Everybody seems to be celebrating that one. Coach James, how you feeling about this course today? I love it. Looks you fun. I want to try it. Try it. Man, I just qualified my oh, thing. No. Athletes. I just qualified this one right here. I A horrible camera, bro. I hopped on the live last night and I was like, what am I watching? Is it really bad on the live? Yeah. yeah. 
kind of phone is this? I don't know. It's a new something. They just got them. To be honest, I don't. I'm not here too often anymore. I'm only here for the comp and on weekends and stuff. So I don't know what goes on anymore. I'm gonna come to y'all. Uh, y'all open gym on Tuesday. I might be there. I try to come in once a month at least. Yeah, come in on Tuesday. I'm trying to get here at, uh, at like six. It's open to four. You probably wouldn't even know because you ain't here that much. I, I know a bit because the schedule I, hasn't really changed. What was it? Yeah, it's, it's open to yeah. adults on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday Thursday is adult from six, technically 6.30 to uh, 9. One minute until we start rounds. I'm not a very good commentator like Artie is, in case any of you have seen the other streams, but I'll do my best to uh, say some stuff if I go quiet. It's just because I have no idea what to say.
let's figure out officially where I want to be walking. So I'll probably start out somewhere around here, a little closer probably, I just want to get too close right now. And then as they make their way, I'll be able to spin it back as they go up. And they'll make their way back over to the left, or well, my right, but I have to push left. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I think so good. I'll do my best to keep everything in frame and keep it as unjerky as possible. But there's only so much I can do even with a gimbal. Oops, that's the wrong way. Three, oh my gosh. Two, one, go. Good speed through those first bars. Just barely misses the alien. And she has that bar above her, but it is in a pretty awkward spot. A lot of people have been missing that grab every once, uh, every every couple runs. So we don't know if it's better to just go without it and try to get there. Although the purple is much farther to the left than it has been in previous groups as well, so it might almost be necessary. Flying through these boards, and these boards can be tough as well. That second one can turn almost completely sideways when you put weight on it. The red, stick on the red. Come on. Got this. Keep those feet up. No accidental. Come on. Throw up that swing. Keep breathing. There. Got it. Down. I believe I told you there's about a minute left on the clock. Keep in mind, I believe these are three minute courses with slight adjustments above above or below that. I don't remember the exact numbers. So two minutes have already been spent. And we're, we're only getting to probably the slowest part with these alien invaders taking a good, amount, a good chunk of time and then the balance right after them. These runs are going to get very, very tough right at the end. Uh, ooh, Hex hooks that first one and then straight into the second one. Yes. Uh, he skips that last hook, uh, skips the last string to get to the finish there. Gets it out nice and easy, doesn't send it flying. Let's go, let's go. Opts to try to go ooh. over the weight and does take a fall. Time does stop when they do fall like that. So right now the time's not running and time has restarted. Goes for a leap but doesn't quite make it. And that will be the second fall, so that is the end of the run. But a very, very good run of it. It was really flying until the end. You know, those last two eat up so much time.
Oh, I keep forgetting that up is not down. This is my fault. Because left is right. Any foot taps or anything, no incidentals are allowed in this obstacle. Can make it pretty tough because that thing does swing very, very low. And it's not always entirely clear when it's going to drop. Sometimes it'll get right to the edge and sometimes it'll drop pretty far, depending on how you're swinging. an amazing second try though, learning from that first one to prepare for the drop no matter what. Time it sounded like I couldn't exactly hear how many seconds. We need to get through this one quick. Ooh, people seem to seem to struggle a little bit with that yellow one. That was an awesome run as well. You guys will start seeing what I mean about almost everybody being able to get about this far. But then the time gets so short, it's hard to get any further than that. Hopefully, we'll see a lot of clears later on. Though. Gotta watch those feet are getting very, very close to that mat there. But she does keep them up above. Well. Stays just inside that blue tape there as well. Not entirely sure what happened there. I believe she just missed a step on the fault trying to jump up. Ooh, this thing is so hard to control sometimes. Nice solid lache there to the um, to the bath bar. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name of it either. Wow, I'm Great at this commentating thing. That purple is way off the side and on the other side of the pole, so it is a little awkward to get around there sometimes.
Big that is a clear because it is a pass through. You can't pass through in that option. 25 seconds left for this last couple of obstacles. Oh. If she can get there, she can get one last point. That is a clear that's that point. That is time. We have Andrew, then Alexander, then Jack. This course is a killer. Lance, I already said a few people camera. That's it. I already said a few camera. I'm good. Sorry about that. I was being a little slow on the uh, on the turn. Nice, right, so he did use that vault to his advantage, just like we were talking about earlier, being able to uh, overshoot and use the top of that vault. Set on there. I did almost have it, so I'm sure I'll have it this time. But it will be a little bit of a time setback having failed right at the end of the obstacle. That wasn't clear though, and I was going to go right into it. This thing is not turning. All the way down to the other side. Get as much use out of that trust as he can, keeping his foot there. Looks like it helped a little bit getting into that yellow one. This has been a struggle for a couple other people so far. Hooking out on backwards, actually. Seconds is going for a major long jump and does come up short. Three, two, one, go! Oh! Real close jump there, but it is such a far jump. Even with a run up, he's coming short.
sorry, the camera's not seeming to want to focus right now. Been a little blurry. Getting real close to the edge there. Ooh, right on the edge of it. I feel like I go up instead of down right here every single time. Yeah! Ooh, that's clear that jump. No! That does miss. Either heard 50 or 15. I think it was 50 seconds. So we still got almost a minute left, right where everybody else has been having a similar amount of time. Well, it is a tight fit, only slightly bigger than the ring. Sometimes if it's even just a little off like that, it just doesn't quite up. Goes in and right back out, but that was a good one. Hooks it in. Right into the next one. Awesome. He's going for that skip on that second one, or the last one. Yes. Does make it, that is a spillover, so he doesn't have that one. He's got, I think I heard 15 seconds, so that would be the 50 that I heard before. He's gotta go for that jump all the way over to the red if, he was, if when time gets down to it. That was time right there. So that was a good run, that jump was awesome on the uh, balance obstacle over there. The box crawl, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the names of these things. Jack's flying through his first couple obstacles. Yes. By rules, if there is an obstacle that is hands only, you cannot like move it, so you can't spin it like you're doing now while you're still standing on a box. I don't know what is this? WNO. My WNO ruling. Oh, getting really close. He just gets a hand up. Oh, doesn't even need it. It doesn't turn fast enough. They run too fast. It's good to go on to the alien invaders. Space invaders. Yeah, they're alien invaders. They're copyright free. He just needs to push and reach. Oh, he just pushes it just barely out of the way there. It was super close. Push off it, buddy. Yeah, right arm, he's got it. There it is. Oh, there it is. Almost so close to it. Come on. There it is. That one takes so much time, though. It's a wonder. Right here, right here. Come on, buddy. 
doesn't quite make it, it seems. After hanging for so long, he's got to be tired. We'll see how far he can make it here. Six seconds to get to the end. <laughs> All right, and that will be his second pause while well, it's the end of time for Jack. He's racing made. It happened to use so much time that by the time he messed up the first one, there was no time for even a second attempt. Like, even though he had the option for it. He was like, six seconds. He's like, yeah, nope. <laughs> Such an unfortunate happens. Such an such. Yeah, excuse me. English, despite being my first language, still refuses to let me speak it. Uh, just yeah. Jesse, if I do remember, has been strong in past comps. We'll see how he handles the obstacles today. We're getting a little tied up at the end here. You can't let those feet touch the mat. So we can't. There's like a certain spot where if you step on it, you'll hit the mat. You can step above or below it, but you can't step on that one spot. Oh, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where it's just in such an awkward spot, you can pull up to it. But you get to good grab this time, and now I see that this time for purple successfully leans into that per, uh, lat vault for stability, but makes it easily. Reaches up and around on the twisting boards. That's what I'm going to call them, because they turn so much. They get that UFO there, and then it's up to the spiral. And he's about to drop. To the space invaders, space invaders. Okay. Hopefully, plenty of time to spare because I'm not aware of the time either. You got it. Maybe going for the skip. Does not appear to. He's going for that last ring. And oh, misses the ring just by a hair. Thinking about going down for that skip, but does hook it in and then comes back down. No hands are allowed in that truss. Only space invaders in these obstacles where your hands are allowed. I know. I did not try that last one because we have enough time to. What a good run. goes to show even someone who's been dominant in a previous course can only get so far with the time limit. Excuse me, I thought I turned it enough, but I did not. Getting past those space invaders is proving to be quite the tricky challenge. Not many people even getting that well, I mean they're all getting that far, excuse me, but not very many people getting past it. And even when they do, taking up so much time just really hurts the runs. You need to really get to the rest of the course as fast as you can in order to get to there. To give yourself as much time on there as you can. One, go! 
Does clear that even with the stumble, hops right up into the next one. And flies to that one with ease. Gets the pipe on swing one, which is a huge save in terms of time. Jumping right into these, no breaks at all. How these people have so much energy, I will never know. It's going for the jump. This one proving to be trivial for him. But still only with some number of seconds left. I knew that was take a little slip there. Maybe I misheard the amount of time though. Seven seconds on the clock. Yeah! Makes it through. Um, I missed the button the first one. It's the second one. No, you're in a good time. Nice job. Down, go sideways. Thank you. This thing is awkward to control. Almost stepping to that part that you're not allowed to step on. She does correct herself. She must get that other foot unstuck though. Oh, flipping onto the other side of the cargo net. She can recover. That's a good recovery there. Just now make it to the bench. Clearing that obstacle. Flying straight into the second one. No breaks whatsoever. No breathe, no breaths. Breathes. Yeah, no breathes. Right up to the alley and then straight up to the bar. Doesn't miss. It is clear there as well. Although really close to stepping onto the side. I believe it's still running clear when she stepped onto the side. Because it's the um the uh plane of the main plane of the pass is on the corner on the opposite corner, but nonetheless. Yeah, you can get through those boards very fast into the spiral. It does seem to be on just to drop quite a bit, but she does successfully react to that and get over there. Yep. 
some reset. I believe maybe hit rope. does not this time and clears that obstacle as well seeing side to side even though that red is on the opposite it's straight ahead but corrects that swing in a heartbeat and is now onto those straight alien invaders space invaders whatever you want to call them See, I want to say close, you guys can see this, but then I don't get to get the, um, the drop in the plane frame. The dismount, I mean. On to this balance. Trying to turn, but she doesn't have to go over those. Ooh, it does take a fall there, however. Knocks it out great on her first try this time. Oh, well, but does take another fall, and that will be the end of it. That's balance, really is so clear. Taking up time, or taking you out directly. Now she has to find a way out of that split, which can be hard because she's well, steps down onto the mat. She needs to take a reset for that. And that side is much more stiff and much more um, taut than the rest of it, making it a lot easier to stand on, but then you risk falling, uh, falling over the side. She does not, though. Let's take, I believe that's her second fall. Yes, so that will be her second fall in this one here. I mean, she has no more for the rest of the course. Oh, and that foot just slides right down the side of that vault. <laughs> but she stays strong and decides to finish up with her remaining time. <laughs> Big pull, just getting those fingertips up there, but not enough to grab. Oh, I'm just missing. Because it is in such an awkward spot, right above almost where the hold is when you swing up to it. Decides to take a head oh, blah, blah. excuse me. Decides to head over to the boards. Looking really strong on the way up here. Ooh, and decided to get two hands on the same side, remembering that those do turn quite a bit. ready to pop out at any second here. She just anticipating to get those legs off when she does. Has to pull it straight back when it does drop. You got a minute left. Just about a minute left to get the rest of this course. Nice. Alright, work on 
Continues to fight on, getting through these obstacles. Lance, what do you think about these runs so far? I think they're pretty good. It's a very tough course with a, a very, very tough, tough time tough limit. Course. That's what I've been saying. A time limit. Basically, everybody gets to the alien or the uh, space invaders, but they can't can't quite get past that and the balance. I'm just taking up so much time today. Oh yeah. It's not the athlete's fault. These are these, these know, are very yeah. very it's tough, uh, to tough, tough obstacles to do, and they're right at the end of such a difficult course as well that you're trying to rush through and fatiguing yourself the entire time. Oh. Fighting until the very end. Excuse me. It's a nice wall tag off that vault. Let's go back to the ring to help get a swing. Excuse me, I, I just developed some hiccups and I'm trying not to pick up super loud on the stream. I believe she grabbed that hole on the way around, but she just is, uh, I believe, not allowed for this one, so that is why she has to go back. all the way up there. She barely is not enough to hold on tight. She has to try a couple more times she does save herself before falling. Oh, it just comes up a little short on that one. Such a tough pull up there as well in the middle of a full swing. It's about two minutes to plan to so I have two minutes to get to the rest of this course. We'll see how this goes so for the rest. Two minutes to have fun, that's right. Skip. Oh, I'm coming up just a two feet, two or so feet short. I'm such a far look, eh? So I need to take a for the rest of it. She must be very, very tired after having to do that. Um, young alien bar obstacle twice. How many runners are there in this age group? Three, two, one, go. 
him right up to the edge of the Carter net. A risky, but probably one of the better strategies for this one. Remember that she cannot stand between where she is and where it's between the net between the bench. Because otherwise her foot will touch that net. She goes from the long reach and does get it, clears that obstacle in good time. Oh, gets a big strong swing. Excellently hitting that bar behind her. But recovers immediately and makes that with share. Now up to the alien. All she needs is one good pull up to that bar there. She does get that pull. Also well, has to go around the corner and she does clear that as well. Oops, far too low. Over here to the boards. Due to wrap an arm up all the way around is definitely the strategy I would go for. Seems to be a very common one today too. Seems to be the, the popular strategy to get through there. But it has worked so far, so I wouldn't doubt it. I uh, doubt it. all these smart people coming up with the same conclusion. Or just seeing each other and deciding that it was better. I have no idea. Right up into the spiral, nice big pull to it. It's getting close to the point where it will drop. Gotta remember to pull those legs up at the very end. Engage that core. Goes to the hop and gets it right on the edge. Oh, needs to pull straight back. Let's get it, keeps those legs up, and gets the end there. Down to not fall back. Up into the ring slider. Does get that clear and nice and strong on that and then redirecting the swing. We've been hurting 19 for time. So coming down to the wire here, she needs to find a way to get through this one quickly. She wants to get that next point. A strong first set, but she needs to keep it up. Only about five seconds left. Big discount, or there's almost that is time there. Hi, we have Aiden W. Dylan Lucas. We've got Killer Queen that bites the dust though. Coach James, where are you at? Where did James go? Jack made him. James! Come on, James! Yeah! Oops, sorry. Oh, it's dropping the gimbal, which would not be good. Three, two, one, go! Man, this phone is choppy. I can't imagine what it's like on the streaming end. I'm sorry for anybody watching. Why did it get so choppy all of a sudden? He just forgets that there's a platform there at the end of the hit. He jumps clean over it. Wow, this is... Oh my gosh. Every couple seconds, I'm just getting a freeze. So I'm sorry if you guys are getting anything even similar or worse than that. There! 
Here's that first obstacle. We're gonna get a big run up. It was nice and fast into it. Doesn't get that switch grip onto the uh, onto the spinning PVC, onto that second bar. Needs to make up some time now, but he is flying, so maybe it'll help uh, alleviate what happened on that first obstacle there with the um, just forgetting. It does happen. It's happened to everybody. It's happened to me even. Oh, he's right, a great pull up. Really flying through these, making up that time. A little bit of a longer discount, but he has the time for it after saving so much before. Looking at about 50 seconds left. He can throw it back, but he's pulling up. That is time for his course. Back for a big run up on the second turn. This time it hasn't started. He makes the grab this time. Touches those feet down on that no contact zone. But there's time to stop it until it's reset. Flying through that ring slider or pop slider. Mm -hmm. 
that for sliding down and not quite getting in the pipe. Hands just barely not making it on top of that bowl in PVC. Gets it this time. But he did put his feet down. So I believe it's the end of this time. So he does not get a rerun because it was he was called out previous to interacting with the obstacle. It was previous to um, hanging on it and having it fall out. So if it had fallen out while he was still good to go, then he would have gotten that rerun. But because it was not um, during his, his live run, I should say, it, I guess it doesn't count. But that, that pipe popping out, I think some of the tapes came a little loose. And the strap can only be wrapped up so tight before it starts sliding. It can only, it can only hold the side so, to, so much before it starts sliding. Up onto those boards. Yeah, maybe for you, Lance. Looks like that is the end of his try right there. So sometimes I try to turn it, but it's got like a, it's like a the axis it's on is locked one direction to the other. So if I miss it, I can slide it up instead of to the side.
and a half. One and a half. I've been lied to. Still got a minute and a half. Keep going, Xavier. I see what Dave meant yesterday. When he meant it says back hurt. Forty five seconds. Oh, dude. Come on, work Twenty more seconds.
Why? Why? Right, Stop doing that. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, right. I don't know why I did that. Launch. Launch. Hit it. Launch. Big swing. Turn out. Oh. <laughs> Evan. Evan. Me? <laughs> Not me. See, it's so easy you can do it with two, three fingers. Nice save, knees. Watch those feet.
שם. Why would you do that? Yeah. I guess turning it too far that way makes it flip upside down. I'm sorry, everybody watching. I'm learning new things. I think it. What about Arden? It looks like you want something to do. You got it, gentle. I think I changed it. I think you were right. 
Thank you, everybody, for coming out. We really appreciate it. Please drive safe. Yeah. Is this Sir Rao's 